Look, we, we are the, the, the only national uh, funeral services operator uh, in Australia, uh, also New Zealand. We do have a presence in Singapore, as you mentioned. Um, about over 250 locations. Um, the, the funeral services sector is, is a strong, um, delivers strong, reliable demand. Um, it's, not a, it's not a service that you can choose not, not, to, uh, not to purchase. When somebody dies, you, you have to do something about it. So we operate in what we call the pre-need, which is when people both plan and then pay for their funeral. And we've got about $400 million, I think it's about $480 million uh, worth of funds under management. Um, at the moment, we then do what we call at need, which is actually the funeral service, and then post need, which is um, the memorialization in our um, funeral parks. And, and, that's a, and that's a lucrative area of the business that not many people are in. Um, people will spend, and we did two sales last year, well over a million dollars to individuals um, on, on memorialization. Um, we, we talk about, uh, just summary of the performance, um, last year, um, again, our EBITDA was 6.5% up. Um, that's probably a little bit below where we would have liked it to be. Um, and that was uh, driven a little bit by the fact that market share was declining, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, our operating earnings after tax was up almost 12%, and that, uh, the difference between that and EBITDA is uh, uh, we negotiated some debt repayment um, in terms of interest rate, and we, and we also we were a little bit more tax efficient. Um, and then the reported profit of almost 30% um, is driven by the performance of the funds under management that we have. Um, and we, we had a good year with regards to funds under management driven by uh, essentially um, investments in sort of single assets properties in, in Sydney. So a bit of a one-off there. Um, we, we as executives get judged by um, operating EBITDA um, in the main. Uh, I've, I've listed there what we call the pillars of growth, and I'm going to talk about them in the next slide. That, I mean, obviously, this is a simplification of what drives the value of the business, um, but these are the, the four key issues. First one is demographics, and that's a, a nice way of saying how many people die in any given year. Um, one of the things about this business is uh, we, we do have a, a very strong tailwind of, in terms of growth in demand driven by an aging population and an increasing population. So whilst people are living longer, um, actually uh, year on year, more, more, more and more people are dying, um, which I still haven't. I've been in the business almost two years. I still find it difficult to, uh, to sort of say that with a smile on my face. But uh, um, the reality is that, that there is a strong demand. Um, that's going. At the moment, we think that's somewhere around the 1% to 1.5%. It fluctuates in any given year. There's a little bit of volatility around that uh, number. Um, but it's, it's the long-term trend is that it will continue to grow year on year. And the year on year growth rate uh, will peak out at about 2.8% growth in 2034. So there's a long, um, long growth rate um, that, we're, that we're mining into. Um, market share, um, we, we traditionally have said we expect that to increase by 1% per annum, um, mainly driven through acquisitions. Um, we've spoken about the fact that we are the largest business. Uh, we are a little bit constrained in some of our key markets, and that's why we're pivoting to uh, a growth strategy of infilling in our core markets through greenfield development and refurbishing our products to drive sort of what I would call organic market share. Um, case average, again, is remarkably um, price inelastic. Um, people tend to have to make a decision in a hurry. They tend to be um, a little bit underinformed, and they really don't want to cut corners. I mean, they're not buying a fridge. Um, they're actually trying to honor a loved one. And so therefore, the price and our ability to charge price and put prices up um, has been remarkably robust over many years. And then again, operational efficiency. This has been a roll up for 15, 20 years. Um, total shareholder return in terms of a per annum basis has been above 20% since it was uh, floated about 15 years ago. Um, but there is an opportunity for us to, to be much more um, efficient in terms of our operations. And, and you'll see in the next slide that we're, we, we're going to make a big investment in, in both systems um, and, and in terms of operational centers uh, so that we can actually serve uh, 250 locations much more efficiently.
which is what we announced in February, which are, is the Protect and Grow um, plan. And essentially that has three arms to it. First is network and brand optimization. We've done a lot of research. My, my motto is that we're, we're a data-driven business. Uh, we know and we can show you the source information rather than we reckon. Um, so we've gone back and done a big data exercise on our markets, which we call network and brand optimization. Um, and that really is about making sure we deliver the right product in the right locations at the right price. Um, that's been driven essentially um, by a couple of executives that we've brought into the business over the last two years. One's been from Qantas in terms of the marketing arm and has really given us a much deeper understanding of what customer needs are, not only now, but will be into the future. And, and so we need to make sure that we upgrade our product so that it better meets the needs of the, of, of the customer into the future. And essentially what, what, what people are after is a much more contemporary product offering. They're after a one-stop shop. Um, and they, not only do they want, obviously, a chapel, um, but they want a celebration area, and they want it all in the one location. Uh, so we, we've uh, announced um, about $160 million over three or four years to essentially refresh, enhance, um, and upgrade our assets. And then we're going to make sure that those assets uh, are utilized to a greater extent than in the past um, by hubbing and spoking, by, by actually opening a lot more what we we'll call shop fronts, um, to actually then spoke into the hub or the refreshed hub. So we're going to drive market share organically. We will still do acquisitions um, where, where the ACCC will let us. Uh, we're not saying that we're not going to do that, but actually that's just we're augmenting the lever that we relied on heavily in the past. Um, in terms of people and culture, uh, what we're going to do is make sure there's much more focus on local, local leadership, um, these businesses were all built up by entrepreneurs before we bought them. Um, our, our emphasis is to make sure that we continue with that entrepreneurial spirit at the local level because it's the people that drive the business. It's the people engaging in the community that generates the leads um, and that makes sure that the reputation of our, our brands, and our brands are White Lady, their Simplicity, their Guardian, um, their Lapine, they're in every market. Uh, they're very well known. People are very sticky towards a brand. Um, so 70% of our business comes from either referrals or repeat business. So making sure we have the right local leaders is critical. Um, and then finally, just in terms of operational efficiencies, um, what we're making sure is we have dedicated shared services centers. Um, and I won't dwell too much. We're not talking about tax. We're talking about um, logistics. We're talking about uh, the processing that needs to be required. We're talking about more trees. Uh, we're talking about staff that then go on the funerals um, and making sure that we operate in a much more efficient manner than we currently do. Um, we're, we're very excited about the Protect and Grow. We think it's going to drive the business um, and, and in forward over the next three, four, or five, six years. Um, and really, I'm going to turn to Joe say now about how we're going to pay for it and how we're going to fund um, the Protect and Grow plan. Joe say. So for us as a company, it's quite a different strategy to protect and grow. We, we haven't the fundamentals of the strategy for the business to grow over the years hasn't changed. But like Mark mentioned, we're limited by the ACCC in some of the markets. So we've had to also go back and have a look at you know, the changing needs of the customers and adapting our network. So, um, so we've got an influx of about 200 millions that we need, to, uh, we need to fund over the next few years. Now, Mark mentioned 160. 160 is for the network and brand optimization, and the remainder 40 million is around the operational efficiencies, which about 10 million is for uh, new systems, front of house, back of house. Um, as you can appreciate with acquisitions over 15 years, um, there's a lot of manual process. There's been some integration done, but there's much more to do. So uh, we're investing in those systems and processes, and the 30 million is around shared services. And shared services, in the context of our business is not finance, well, it's not finance and IT and HR, it's more um, the shared services for the operations. So it's basically the mortuaries, the, the hearse, the call center, the admin at the site. So we're leveraging the site, so we're probably the only players in the business that can do that because we have a national network. Our focus is around metropolitan assets. And so if we've got an area where we've got, we could have you know, 30, 40 funeral homes, we have one or two 
shared services that are strategically placed. Now, it would be surprising after years and years of acquisitions that we ended up with those type of assets in the right place. And that's what the network and brand optimization is about, is making sure that we have the right brands and also we're supported with the shared services. So there's this 160 million on the refresh, enhance, and growth, which are the shop fronts, and the 60 million on the operational efficiencies. Now, we tackled this with two from a funding perspective. Um, you know, for those of you who've had the time to look at our balance sheet, it could be called quite somewhat a bit lazy. So we, you know, we were a bit undergeared for some of our peers internationally. So, um, so we have the capacity to fund, you know, to fund through um, through debt bank or other instruments. So at the moment, what we presented the market in February was we've just basically increased by 60 million um, our facilities for 2017 and early 2018. So that was our first small, like short-term uh, strategy. And then stage two, we're just embarking on that at the moment is where we're, we're stepping back and having a look at our whole um, facilities and the way we've bought in the past. And we're just taking a, a, a time to actually propose to the board, you know, what do we go forward to sustain the growth you know, for the upcoming 10 to 15 years. So um, 